genius for life. Coconut smoothies coming at you. Hey everyone, how's it going? I'm Alex Bear. I'm the CEO and founder of Genius Juice, and welcome to 15 Minutes of Genius. This is episode 37. Um, we are over a third of the way there to getting to 100. To get to 100, knock on wood, would be amazing. Hopefully we'll get there. Um, so I have an awesome guest, good friend of mine, known him for a, a very long time, I think ever since I started Genius Juice. So, uh, But before rolling into our guest, I'd like to give a big shout out and plug to our man here at the studio. That is Mark Nicholas, Mark N at ManhattanBeachStudios.net. He does videos, photos, editing. He did the photography on our Costco box, which just landed in LA. Little shameless plug for Costco and Genius Juice. So again, uh, Mark Nicholas, Mark Annam at Studios.net. All right, so without further ado, my man, Greg Fleischman. He is currently the uh, co-founder and CEO of Foodsters Junk Free Bakery, along with his partners, I'm going to mess up. I'm not going to uh, pronounce this right. Bel Galit Leibau, which I'm sure I butchered, and, and Sarah Michelle Geller. That, I know how to pronounce her name. Greg is also the co-founder of Purely Righteous Brands, a boutique management consultancy focused on the natural product space with a wide range of clients from Suja to Bumblebee. Greg has also held GM and CMO for the layman, that's chief marketing officer, roles at Sambazon, Coca-Cola, and Kashi Kellogg, and was named to Forbes' list of top consumer catalysts. He presently serves on the board of directors for uh, a Demeter Biodynamic, Noon Hydration, Fourth and Heart, Once Upon a Farm, that's Ari Raz, just had him on our show, Lily Sweets, and his founding mentor for Project Potluck. Greg, how's it going? Good. Thanks for having me on. Absolutely, and you're uh, quite a setup. Thank you, quite thank you. Yeah, and we. It's, uh, it's Galit Labo, by the way. <laughs> Galit Labo. So I think I pronounced her first name right, but her last name I totally screwed it up, no. right? No, no you, mur Nothing you right. murdered both. Murdered both. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> right on. At least I got your name right because I know you. So yeah, it's yeah. about all I have to my name right now. Um, everything else is going down <laughs> the drain here. So, uh, okay. So thanks for having, thanks for being on and, uh, let's get right into it, man. Um, you know, uh, right before we started taping, we we're catching up here in Santa Monica. Uh, sometimes you go down to San Diego, uh, foodsters, amazing company, purely righteous brands, amazing company, a lot to unpack here. I just want to start with your story, right? Kind of take some steps back. How did you get into the CPG space, right? Before becoming the legendary Greg Fleischman, what were your humble beginnings? Oh, I'm just, I'm like My hyping you up beginnings. really high right now. So, but go ahead. I know. Thank you so much for that. I appreciate it. Um, sure. It's overblown. I was in a completely di different industry. I was, uh, I thought I'd be in the music industry and that would be my career. And I was about ready to go on tour with Guns N' Roses and Metallica doing tour management type stuff. Really? as uh, just a, a way to kind of expand, uh, you know, uh, in, into the music industry and uh, happened to be visiting my brother in San Diego. And uh, and there was a, a tour going on there. There's a Pink Floyd tour happening there. And uh, and so I went to it and I was kind of looking at brought my brother and he's like, God, and he's looking around at people that were older in the industry. He's like, is this really what you want for your life? And I was like, yeah, maybe not. And so I went and interview. I just went on a random interview at Kashi on a Thursday, fell in love with the company. There was only a handful of people there at the time. And then I started on Monday and then that was 14 years. Um, that was a 14 year start to my career was working at Kashi when it was a hundred thousand in revenue and then uh, building it up, selling it to Kellogg's and then continue to work at Kellogg's. And then I, then I went on to Coke and, uh, and came back to California and then started working on uh, on on various other brands and started Purely Righteous to, to to grow other green space brands the way that we grew Kashi in different ways, of course, but just that spirit, that soul, trying to make an impact on the industry and the world. So well, wow, yeah, that's, and I think uh, really amazing to to build a brand like Kashi and to help with that and see it all the way to its exit. What did it, is it, was it disclosed? What did Kashi actually sell for to Kellogg's? That wasn't, so, that wasn't disclosed. 
Oh, okay. It was a comfortable amount. So a billion. That was a long time ago, though. <laughs> a billion, yeah, right? Less than a billion. Okay, yeah, less than a billion. More than a dollar, more, less more, than a billion. But more than a hundred million, right? Yeah. Somewhere in between. The good health. Yeah, exactly. It, it kicked part of that whole frenzy at that time in the year was 2000 when in big strategic craft in Kellogg and General Mills we're thinking we needed to diversify. We need to get, we need right. to, there's a something happening here that's real and we need to get after it. And so we were part of that bunch that was uh, sold at the time. Right on. Yeah, that kind of the healthy sales. for you uh, cereal, yeah. healthier for you bars. So from there, uh, that's that's Kashi. And yeah. now to, next thing to unpack is um, Purely Righteous, right? I know you started Purely Righteous before going into Foodsters. Uh, we've met, you know, we've talked about some past branding projects. You've done branding for uh, Rebel, for Suja. Tell us more. I, I really like the part of your story with, with, with Suja, right? I don't think you mentioned it yet, but with Suja, the fact that you were there, you were their CMO, and you saw a pivotal growth period um, with Suja. So what was it like to kind of go through that? And what were some strategies to get Suja from a small company to eventually, you know, becoming a, uh, you know, a big revenue company and all over the country. How was that experience in working with them? Because, you know, I'm in beverage. I want to know more about that story. There are a couple of stories. You know, the Chameleon Cold Brew is another one that that is followed something. You know, I think it, it's great because both organizations had an amazing team of experts and passionate people that worked well together. And uh, both companies, I would say, and both of them, you know, have for better part exited, you know, and, you know, it started with a, a plan, you know, and not wanting to grow a business by the seat of our pants. So that was a, a important thing. So one was setting up a roadmap for growth that was very fundamental, identify consumers that would be open to such product, and then start to communicate with them, build out the advocacy, build out the brand love, really get that repeat going. And, uh, and then, uh, you know, so on paper and in a plan, that all sounds really good, but then the execution becomes so critical. And the, the people, the team at both those companies were so fantastic when it came to that execution. And that's what makes it special. You don't see that every day when you're wondering why are all these companies selling or how are they scaling up so well? It's because they've got some genius, if you will, inside that organization. So. For the, there, there's nothing really all that black box about how uh, it, it was grown. It was great timing, great get accessibility. So getting mm -hmm. into the right stores, having an anchor account. Whole Foods was the first anchor, and that came and that really set it for everything to get meetings at Costco, which was the next big account. Then Kroger, next big account. Um, so getting the right accessibility. And then all the marketing behind it too. So all the field sampling that got set up mm -hmm. is so key. Liquid yep. to lips, you know, was really important. And uh, and then you know, just obviously owning the internet as much as possible, even back then. <laughs> but I think the playbook now for growing brands is so much different. So how is it different? Well, one, when you think about the next couple of years, you would. If you're a classic beverage brand, you know, at Coke or Suja or Chameleon or all these others is that you want that liquid to lips. It, it is that taste part and experience and whatever it is, whether it's some Coachella event or a yoga studio. So that context, getting the sampling going is so critical. You can't do that right now. Um, so we have to find other ways. And usually it's related to digital and marketing. And you find that to be the proxy for any of that a critical sampling that had been used um, before to build brands. And then, um, you know, that's a big thing. And then just the store traffic is lower. So the way you're marketing now is really marketing against the internet as well. Mm -hmm. So not only is the product accessible through Thrive Market and Amazon and Hive and, you know, Good Eggs and all the others, um, you know, you, you have to market to them differently. And what's great is you with with folks like Instacart, and like Thrive, they have the best and most amazing uh, alternative sampling programs to help build brands. Got it. Interesting what you said, um, just not only the digital marketing strategy, but one key thing I got, my takeaway was, you know, right place, right time, right product. There has to be a demand for it 
And what was so pivotal about Suja is before that, there was really not a premium organic cold pressed juice that was like really fresh tasting that came out. And Suja was that brand. And I remember when it first hit Whole Foods, I thought I, I thought like maybe I had to get a new prescription um, at, mm-hmm. at my uh, ophthalmologist because um, I saw them at like, I think, eight ninety nine at Whole Foods, you know, the classic, like the 12 Essentials and the uh, Green Supreme. So, but it's amazing that even at that price point, the product was selling. And I think a big reason was because of the quality. The quality was amazing. Just like the quality on that vanilla cinnamon genius juice that you're drinking right now. Which is my favorite flavor, by the way. Love it. Um, Love it. Yeah, obviously the product has to deliver, right? Um, When you think about cleansing was like all the rage in 2013 and 14. Yep. So there was like this critical need state. And then you have a brand in the right place at the right time. And everyone's like, oh, a juice cleanse. That'll be it. And, uh, and, and so, you know, latching on to an emerging trend at the right time, they talk about news jacking, this is brand jacking. So right time, right place with the right product that is superior to what else is out there Mm -hmm. is so critical because I would say it's easy to get trial. It's harder to get repeat if you don't have good quality product. Exactly. Exactly. And and there, yeah, I mean. Principally speaking and building brands, there's one book that I always read at least once a year. And it's the one on, it's the, basically the biography on ESPN. It's called the ESPN. Those guys have all the fun and they have 10 of these critical steps that they took to scale this network up, fascinating everything from where was the office, these HR guidelines. And then there were all these things that they did, like the first one to go into, you know, at the time, Time Warner and build out that relationship. So that, that, that when I adaptive to any entrepreneur that's trying to grow their brand, you know, you have to build strategic partnerships. You know, you have to build a great team, have great product. I love that book. Awesome. And what's the name of the book one more time? It's uh, ESPN. And those guys have all the fun. Okay, great, great. I'm gonna definitely. And it's fun. It's and... it's fun to read too. It's a good read, even if you're not a even if you're not a sports fan. Which yeah, there's not. a lot to kind of learn from that. Just as an entrepreneur, building a brand and building a business and uh, and scaling. Let's get into two more things. Um, this is gonna definitely be beyond 15 minutes, and I'm okay with that. For certain people, I make an exception, and you're one of those people. Nice. Um, so you have a free reign ticket here to go beyond baby beyond 15 um which there should be a new show beyond 15 minutes of genius right that's what that's our next segment (laughs) so uh, that'd be a good marketing idea just came up with that and i'm rubbing my hands like this like yes so um with foodsters um tell us about the connection with sarah michelle sarah michelle geller tell us how you started foodsters and it's 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 a segment that was sleepy and no changes have been made why were you convinced that coming out with a junk-free, healthier for you baked item good? Why was it? Why was it the right time? Tell us more about your decision-making process in coming out with this brand. Yeah, the um, you know I because uh, it is interesting. The uh, uh, I like going into the, I had worked in every single cat twenty-three different categories across the store. Store you know frozen in the sub segments in there, beverage, food, you know center store. Uh, other items like you know bars and cereal things like that and um and i i I thought baking mix would be a good thing to reinvent so galit came up with the idea for foodsters and uh, we use that inspiration uh in everything we do today so uh we all have kids so sarah galit and i all have two kids each and at the time of starting the company they were all under 10 and we thought you know what, if we're going to invest all of our energy and time, we want to be able to integrate our families into this. And what really inspired us was the Nestle Toll House cookie moments that we grew up with and said, how do we modernize that for today? How do we get that connection, those home and hearth moments that last a lifeline, a lifetime, but make sure they're current, you know? And so when you go into the baking aisle at the time, it, they're, all you saw in there was legacy brands that weren't at all um it might have been easy to make and cheap but they certainly had taste issues filled with chemicals so it was pretty yep. easy we could be world first brand in there to deliver a junk free mix and then serve the needs of the consumers and really building out those lifetime moments of joy and then it was always 
baking was our starting point, you know, and then we would go into another category that where you've got frequent consumption and it was already made. And that's really what we're pursuing right now with our new ready to eat uh, line of donuts, muffins and brownie bites, because who doesn't want a, a, a donut, you know, and, yeah, uh, I, even so that I do. we've done that we've done. And, you know, so our key attributes here to really make sure that we're delivering something that nobody else can mm-hmm. is that lower sugar, the fact that it's ultra clean, it's glyphosate free, and then it's still easy to make it convenient and taste great. So we've got all of that together. And then there's no other brand like us, like that is doing what we're doing and the way in which we're doing it. And that it, and then it's something that consumers need. So following those fundamentals, but for me personally, the fact that my kids get to be involved in the running of our business, whether it's coming up with new product ideas um, and, and of course doing any prototype sampling and then even in, inspiring social content that we have, that is the most gratifying about, about what I get to do personally. And then of course, obviously what consumers say about our brand is also the, you know, what, you know, is, is fueling motivation and, and inspiration. Yeah, definitely. Um, and one thing we talked about like, on the phone like a couple weeks ago is like, it's kind of like, you know, you got to be uh, a little bit good and a lot lucky in this business, right? Even yeah. with all the connections uh-huh. and the team timing. But the fact that because of the pandemic, a lot of people are at home and they're and they're cooking, right? And they're making things. And I think yeah. I remember when the pandemic first hit in March, I looked at the top selling items and I thought I would see like face masks, face masks or sanitizer in the number one and number two spot. The number one spot, you know what it was? It was a bread maker, <laughs> a bread yeah. maker. So like yeah, people- Yeah, sourdough bed, bread making has gone off. <laughs> oh my God. So like that really, your brand, Foodsters really falls in line with that love. Again, like just having more time to yourself at home the creative, right? And making things at home and passing the time. Last thing I want to talk to you about um, is Purely Righteous. That's a whole other subject. The main thing I want to ask you about is what was your favorite, I know you have a lot of projects. What was one project that really stood out to you? What was the before? What was the after? What did you guys achieve? Um, just tell us more about a case study with one of the one of the projects you worked on with Purely Righteous, your branding agency. Oh my gosh, that, <laughs> there's just, a lot. Just there, one, there's a just lot. one. I mean, oh my yeah. God, I, they, they uh, well, certainly they're all special. Um, yep. The, uh, I mean, Once Upon a Farm is probably a, a really good one because, you know, had to do everything, come up with a new brand name, a new visual identity system, mm-hmm. things like that. That I, it, that has been a great journey and uh, from start to, and then it, it, it's had its own journey, had its own stages, but that's one that I am, and the rest of the team that was involved in that um, are particularly proud of. Um, but there's certainly a lot of other other projects that we've worked on. Rebel is another one that I think is was particularly exciting and fulfilling because uh, the founder is amazing, uh, Paolo, and mm-hmm. then created some magic. And then they have a, a social component inside it. You know, they're the you know. Um, not for sale that deals with trafficking human trafficking and the idea that you can buy a product that is healthy for you that tastes amazing and it's got a, a social component to it that to me was amazing and getting that positioned was particularly fulfilling i would say totally i can totally. go on and on yeah I yeah i mean uh, i i know paulo as well and uh i think to date they've they've donated over i believe o- almost 1.5 or even up to $2 million to not for sale to fight human trafficking, right? And it's crazy. Uh, David Batsik, I think his name is, uh, one of the founders yep. of Not For Sale, probably butchered his last name, just like Elites. Batstone. Um, <laughs> yeah, Batstone. See, I, I think I have a specialty on screwing up last names. I can't even pronounce my yeah. last name right. So, you make uh, a great teacher. <laughs> totally, yeah. And I got the whole, like, Einstein look and you know the crazy professor look. I probably fit right into the academic academia <laughs> system. Um, but I remember the story that David told on a YouTube video where there, one of his favorite restaurants in San Francisco, right? He would go there like every weekend or one thing like, with his family. There was a human trafficking ring in the basement in San Francisco under the restaurant. And like when you hear stories like that, it's cool to have. Um, leaders and people just fighting for causes like him to create that, partner up with Rebel, and then raise all this money that will go again, you know, go for fighting human trafficking. 
and they've really shined a spotlight on this issue, which is mission accomplished, I feel. Um, it needs okay. to be. It needs to be, dude. So um, let's go into our next segment here because we're running out of time. And I think we're gonna ha- we're definitely going to have a part two with you, dude, because there's so much more to unpack about Jennifer Garner with one, Once Upon a Farm, with Sarah Michelle Gellar. Like, there's going to be a part two here. So, But anyway, for part one, this is our next segment, which is called Rapid Fire Questions. <laughs> Rapid Fire Questions. <laughs> Can't can't resist. I always do something weird. Okay, so I'll ask you a series of questions, rapid fire. You answer one minute or less. Ready? Yep. Okay. Look a little nervous. You're not nervous. Yeah. I do. Oh, let me fix. I don't know where to look. By the way. <laughs> look. You look <laughs> I don't at know the. Look uh, at you or look in the camera? Yeah, probably both. Maybe one eye can go there and the other eye can go to the camera. I, I, I wish I had. I wish I had that skill. <laughs> All right, here we go. First question: In sync or Backstreet Boys? In <laughs> sync. <laughs> First thing you do when you wake up? Uh, read my iPad. Twitter. <laughs> Twitter. Okay. One less person on Twitter, right? Their account got banned. Mo- I think there are quite a few less. <laughs> yeah, quite a few less after last week, right? Uh, we're we're taping this in January, uh, a week after the whole Capitol thing. Movie you can watch in a limited amount of times. Oh my, that uh, a Shawshank Redemption for sure. <laughs> the number one movie of all time on IMDb. So shout out to Tim Robbins and Morgan Freeman. You guys rock if you ever watch the show. Probably won't, but may, you never know. Song you can listen to an unlimited amount of times. Mm, that's a tough one. Um, I'd have to say Pearl Jam's Black. Right on. Favorite sport to watch? I was going to say that. that mm. um, favorite? Oh, I hate sports. Uh, <laughs> let's see. Not badminton. Not softball. I'd say football. Football. Okay. I love badminton. You really oh. you hit on that. But uh, haven't been able, <laughs> haven't been able to play for a year. It's been closed at Manhattan Beach. Yeah. Shout out to Manhattan Beach I'd Badminton rather. Club. Zoom, yeah, Microsoft. Uh, yeah, so Zoom, Microsoft Teams, or Google Meet? Which one's your favorite? Oh, jeez. Oh, None of them. Uh, Google Meet. <laughs> what is your spirit animal? Ooh, um, let's see. Not a worm. Um, I would have to say mm, I am inspired by the lion. The lion. Cool. That's our second most yeah. answered spirit animal. Window seat or aisle seat on an airplane? Always window. Peanut butter or almond butter? Got to open it up to like coconut butter and others. Uh, I know. Let's see. Almond butter. Almond butter. Okay. Almond butter. There is almond butters That's with coconut easy. in it. I've seen those on the shelf. Uh, are you yeah. an om- omnivore, flexitarian, vegetarian, or vegan? Mm, flexitarian for sure. Cool. couple more here. Uh, LeBron James or MJ. Oh, MJ. Okay, Easy. you took you took too long on that. I, I was getting nervous. Uh, usually, if they say LeBron, I, I actually turn off the camera, like it's oh, it's over, like early. <laughs> yeah, uh, ginger or turmeric. Oh, um, that's hard. Uh, mm, turmeric. Turmeric. Favorite food or drink? If you're stuck on a des- deserted island, you cannot say Genius Juice. You cannot say Foodsters. You can't say any brand you've ever worked with. We're purely righteous, and you can't say any brand you've ever been with. <laughs> that, 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 <laughs> oh I think that eliminates like 40 brands right there. Oh, that's a good question. <laughs> I think if I was on a deserted island and I was never going to be found, and all I could eat was one thing, and I didn't care, it would definitely be Reese's Peanut Butter Cups. <laughs> right on. Right on. I'm sure they're, they're, they they grow out there. They grow off the trees somewhere. Yeah. Right on. Okay, so that is our rapid fire questions with Greg Fleischman. So, um, yeah, man, thanks for being on the show. Definitely going to be a part two, and uh, that is episode thirty-seven. So, thank you, Greg, for joining us, and uh, take good care. Okay. Awesome. Thank you. You too. All right. Thanks, Go America. Man. Go America. America. All right, so that is episode 37. As mentioned, Greg Fleischman, the co-founder and CEO of Foodsters. 
Uh, he's he's been with many different companies, and also he is the co-founder of Purely Righteous Brands, a great branding agency that is in Solano Beach. If you're looking for uh, upgrades and refacing your packaging, uh, messaging, they're great for that. So make sure to reach out to Greg for that. We'll have his contact information below in uh, the LinkedIn comments. So again, episode 37 in the books, 15 minutes of genius. And one last thing, what is it? Mm, oh, stay genius, my friends. Genius for life. Coconut smoothies coming at you.